What's up guys, you got Crave here with impressions on the Ghost Recon Wildlands open beta and any changes that I might have noticed since playing the closed beta. Now I'm going to tackle this based on the pros and cons list I did for the previous Wildlands video I uploaded, so here are some of the things I mentioned in that video. So you've got the pros, it was a fun game overall, um, it had that uh, open world feel, uh, I liked the skill trees and upgrades, uh, it didn't have any bullet sponges, and uh, it had uh, decent enemy escalations. Uh, the cons, the story was quite flat, uh, the terrain variety I was expecting wasn't there in the uh, closed beta. Um, vehicle control was pretty bad, uh, limited progression in terms of character progression. Uh, and the last con I noticed, as I just commented on that video, was that uh, it needed some work in terms of its snap to cover system. Now, for the undecided list or the limbo list, uh, which uh, the traits I couldn't identify as a pro or as a con were graphics, um, mission variety, and my point of view or my issue with the DLC that um, Ubisoft plans to release with the game. For the pros, nothing has really changed. It's still very much a fun game overall. I was actually excited to get the chance to play the open beta as I couldn't stop thinking about the fun I had in my first playthrough of the game. The fact that they added a new province to explore really just made it better. It still has that uh, open world feel, much like in Watch Dogs 2, but as I mentioned in the upload, there are limitations to that open worldness. Uh, the skill trees are still a, well, a great thing and being able to level a bit higher to obtain other skills and see other gear like sniper rifle variations was a great thing. The part on enemy escalations improved in the sense that there are now surface to air missiles or SAMs uh, to worry about when using choppers to get to your destination. Uh, those SAMs just really just heightened the experience in my opinion. Now one thing that I do want to add for the open beta is it feels they added a faster day night cycle which 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 is pretty great in my opinion it can really affect your playstyle especially if you while well, you're trying to go via the stealthiest approach you might be like just like me trying to avoid rotating spotlights at night which uh, makes it definitely makes it better to go through a mission area during the day now of course uh, because of these uh, cycles if you take too long in an area during the afternoon or daytime uh, the cycle will shift before you notice it and also I noticed that uh, it appears that they added render scaling this time in the menu options but I might just I might have just missed it during the close beta. But anyway, uh, it's pretty great to see that. Of course, uh, turning the scaling higher will tank your frame rates. Now, in terms of the cons list I made, uh, the story unfortunately still feels a bit flat. But the addition of the Montuyoc province felt better. The story, well, the story still isn't fresh in any way. It's basically about an old army ranger who turned and decided to support the drug cartel, which explains why some of the drug cartel forces are pretty much well trained. Now, there's no difference in terms of objective. You simply have to get more information to locate and kill the area boss. Now, for variety in terms of the terrain, um, adding the new province negates that con I listed as it does make the background different and you're, well basically you're just not seeing all the brown and green in the first area and that's a great thing now the vehicle system and the snap to cover system is still well there's still issues uh, but uh, having played the game previously I guess I was able to make some adjustments to make them seem not so terrible now I, well anyway I still feel that those two aspects could have been better now the character progression issue is so-so at this point uh, as there is a chance for you to discover new skills if you put in the effort to get more information on how to find those special medals that give you additional abilities. Now I found two more issues in the open beta. It appears to glitch on an ultra wide setup so that's 21 by 9. When you first launch the game, the frame is towards the left side of the screen so it might just be because of the aspect ratio or it called well, it could also be due to the fact that I have another monitor running, but the issue is, well, easily fixed anyway. So when you're in game, all you have to do is simply toggle to borderless mode and then back to full screen to simply resolve it. Now, the other issue is that I've noticed stutters in the game where my frame rates would drop all of a sudden for about a second or two. Now, it can be annoying in firefights, but it's not that frequent that it makes the game unplayable. 
For the limbo list I made, I'm not sure about the DLC issue and I guess that's something that can only be determined once you actually experience the DLC. So that's still pretty much up in the air. Now in terms of uh, graphics, I think I will list that as a pro now given that it looks good in many parts. I, And I hope I haven't quote well, quote unquote, settled. Uh, but the game appears to look better now compared to the closed beta. Again, I'm just hoping um, I haven't, again, settled. And mission variety can now be listed as a con, as the variety in things you have to do or can do hasn't really changed much since the previous playthrough. Now, I'm not sure what the other provinces will offer, but I'm hoping there's some more variety, mission variety tucked away there. Uh, maybe Ubisoft can still surprise us. But yeah, as, as, as of this moment, I am listing uh, mission variety as a con. Still overall though, Ghost Recon Wildlands is a fun game based on, well, the two beta experiences uh, I've gone through. Um, it's a mix of different games like Watch Dogs, GTA, The Division, and a bunch of other games, and yet it still has its own flavor. I do feel like more could have been done in terms of the story depth and the mission variety, especially the mission variety part, but the fun aspect is pretty strong enough to make you forgive its shortcomings. That is, if you're not a very uh, critical type of gamer. It will definitely be great if you can mix in solo play and have at it with some friends, especially when you crank up the difficulty settings. So overall, again, Ghost Recon Wildlands is a fun game. Anyway, thanks for checking this out, guys, and I'll talk to you soon.